No, it looks like you are the most relaxed person in the whole wide world. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> so thank you. How are you. I am good. I mean, the la it's so fantastic because you and I got friendly in the lockdown. So when we talk yeah. about things we lost, I often talk about things I gained and just being able to establish a a connection with you was was one of those highlights. So since the last oh, time since the last time we spoke, it's been uh, we've recovered. We had six family members who were ill, who, in, who were infected with COVID. Everybody's fine. And uh, South Africa is slowly opening up. Uh, clients are looking up again, and hopefully we'll start seeing those marketing and brand building budgets return. How are you doing? Uh, very much the same. You know, we've had, um, we've had, are we recording? Is this yes. going? Yes, yes. Okay, we're going. Show's on. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, I'm sorry. You have to cut that part out. No, I love um, that. The show is on. <laughs> um, we're doing, you know, we're doing pretty well. We we, um, we made a lot of decisions early on, um, given, I, I think in I think in May, and I, I'm going to have my facts and figures a little bit wrong, but this is incorrect but accurate. Yes. <laughs> or uh, inaccurate but correct. Yeah. Um, I think 45,000 people got laid off between, April and maybe June or something like that in advertising in the industry. And we made, we made a commitment that we weren't going to lay anybody off. We just said, we're going to find a way to not lay anybody off. We'll figure that out. And uh, because I didn't want to put people that I value into the, into that sort of marketplace. And uh, we're a fairly, you know, small agency. There's 23 of us. Yes. And uh, we thought, you know, it's, it's harder to, you know, I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. So, to recruit people, all of those things are very specific for certain people to want to work in an agency like this, in a market like this. Some of that's changed now that we have remote. You know, I've been, my eyes have been opened a little bit to remote working. And uh, and so, um, you know, we just made those decisions. And so, I, I like you, um, I've gained a lot. I've gained, I've gained so much more than I thought going into this sort of anxiety-ridden year of unprecedented what the hell you know, and it's, it's actually been incredibly productive and, and one of the more wonderful years I've had in the last 10 years. It's been incredible. Oh my God. So I, and, and, and forgive me cause I just went straight into how are you doing? Um, will you help me set the stage for somebody who doesn't know, um, sure. and Baldwin, I'm just like, what's, what's your elevator pitch when somebody says, Hey, I read your book. And Zah told yeah. me about it, but tell me what your agency is about. Yeah, so you know, I, I, we look at brands as um, as a set of beliefs and values um, that determine behavior. So we we think that successful brands are always based on um, a belief system, and that they're anchored in this belief, and then that determines everything you do. Some of which is advertising and communications and design, but it's a lot more than that. And so we always look at brands. We, we always look at brands as um, as a three hundred and sixty sort of uh, being with a soul and a, a way of operating. And what we talk about is that you know if you want to grow, you you need to get your belief system codified. If you don't have it, I mean, usually is in the building somewhere, right? If you don't have it, uh, you need to articulate it. And when you, once you articulate it, you articulate it to your people, you articulate it to your supply chain, you articulate it in your advertising, in your design, and it makes everything much more efficient. The other thing about us as an agency is we believe in business as a force for good. So we are always trying to be additive in everything that we do, and we, we want to give our clients the tools they need to change their world. So, so that, that's, that's what we do. And within that is a lot of really great advertising and really great design and smart strategy and all that stuff. But it comes from a, it comes from, a, I think, a grounded place of uh, we don't want to just start with what's the logo and design or what's, you know, um, it, because we feel like you, you, there's a much bigger conversation you should be having before you get to that stuff. So would you, would, how would you respond if somebody said, so David, is belief the same thing as purpose? Because a lot more conversation is happening in the marketplace now about purpose-led yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah, we're definitely a purpose-driven agency, but we talk about purpose as a big P, little P. So we don't think that every company has to have a big P in order to 
uh, have an impact. And I, I read an article of which I'm going to butcher a little bit, but they basically made a great example of it, which is, you know, if you have a car wash, you probably have a little P, which is, uh, you know, to make to make owner, I believe the example they used was to make owners proud of their car. Yes. Right. That's a great process. As opposed to to cleanse the human spirit, you know. Um, and so I, I think uh, we talk a lot about big D, little D, like when we go into clients, you know, there's, there's big D clients, Ben and Jerry's, Patagonia, those are big D clients. They use, and the distinction I would, I would give, and I may be wrong about this, but I, I think the distinction of a big D client versus a little D client is big P, big P purpose clients use their products to achieve a goal and sell at the same time. Little P, I think, are trying to solve a problem and using their pro- products and or services to solve a problem. Uh, and that problem could be very small. It could be whiter teeth, you know, it could be <laughs> a lot of different things. But, you know, but the Patagonians of the world are trying to change the equation of uh, the usage of clothing, you know, but they're still running a very profitable business. And so we're a B Corp. I don't know. Are you, are you familiar with the B Corp movement? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So we're a B Corp. We've been a B Corp for about eight years, for, for maybe nine years now. And uh, we very much believe in that movement. And so, um, it, you know, that is business is a force for, can be a force for good. Mm. And how do you use your business as a force for good? And I, and I really have a judgment around it. I, I think if you're a kind of company that doesn't want to do that, that's okay with me. I don't know that I want to deal with you. I don't know why, that I want to, you know, give you my money. But, but I also don't judge it. That's fine. You know, and, and there are a lot of companies, our purpose is just to make, a shitload of money. Okay. That's great. That's good for you. You know, (laughs) I I, I guess it, I guess it makes it quite interesting because even in our own practice, so, um, um, the elevator, our elevator pitches is, is, um, working with leaders to create high influence brands where Mm. the distinction between impact and influence for me, impact is where, the pebble lands in the water and then influence are those concentric circles that form around it. And much like yeah. you, um, we're very much interested in life beyond the transaction um, yeah. because there is life beyond the trans, and that, that space is that relational space. So I guess a huge part of why I resonated with your book is because it was attending to the, the, those, those human truths that are a requirement in creating work that matters more than just, I mean, I've, I worked at McCann for a long time and it was all about work that works. But I actually right. think that we live in a time now where we have to be creating work that matters. Yeah, I think that's beautifully said. I will say there's a, there's a real debate happening right now where you know people just say, look, shut up, your job's to just sell, that's it. And I think the I think the the point that's missed in that conversation is that why not do both? Yeah. Why not sell and try to have impact? Why not try sell and try to make things a little bit better? I, I, they're they're not mutually exclusive. And so my feeling has always been, you know, um, if you don't want to make things better, that's fine. But why wouldn't you? You know, why why wouldn't you want to try to do the things that you can to leave a better world for your kids and for your friends and family and the generations to come. I just don't understand why you wouldn't want to do that. So especially when you can still succeed. And one of the things about purpose driven work that I think is misunderstood is it can actually when done well, and believe me, there's a lot of good washing that's not I that I would consider not good purpose driven work, but it drives awareness. It dri- it does a lot of things that, you know, if you want to get on that sort of cold end of the Brian Sharp bath, you know, uh, how brands grow, which I think is a fantastic book. But I think there's a valence around around it that can drive awareness and can do all of the things that he's talking about, which is creating memory structures and all that stuff. It's all it's all part and parcel. You know, you don't have to give up one to to do the other. And I feel like the camps are well, no, screw you. That's you're just a do gooder and you're ashamed of your business. I'm so sick of that argument. You're ashamed of the ad business. I love the ad business. I love it. You know, but uh, but that's you know, it's just it's just it's this conversation that's just ongoing so but and 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 you 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 raise an interesting point because part of what we see here right and and I've, it's a hypothesis i haven't tested it which is if if a lot more ceos were marketers we may be having a different conversation about the role of brand in the business right because right. i think a right. lot i think a lot of corporates are led by 
CAs and financial people, and it's fantastic because they can keep track of the money. But no human being wakes up thinking, I am going to spend my money at X. We wake up thinking, I want company X to solve my problem. And as a consequence of that, I give them my money and they give me a solution. So my question to you is, do you think that um, having more marketers on corporate boards could help us effect some form of change about the appreciation of brand in the business ecosystem? Yeah, I, I love when you have um, marketers on, on the actual board because I feel like they're, the, it forces a different conversation that might happen were they not in the room. Um, and I, I think that's very valuable, yeah, because um, our, framework, our framework is usually brands. And, our, and our, you know, when we start to focus on what a brand is and what brands do and how a brand is really for a company, it's a leverageable asset. And in many ways, it's the lever- leverageable asset because a lot of companies don't have distinct differences anymore. There's just so many things that are the same. Um, and every once in a while, you get something that's completely unique and wonderful and great. But that's not that often anymore, you know. And so I think brand starts to become everything. Brand becomes the competitive uh, edge that you have in in marketplace. And so yeah, so if you get a marketing person on a board, or there's, I, I find a lot of CEOs are the ones with the big vision, the big marketing vision. Though you know, a lot of times the CEO is the one that has. They started the company, especially a founder. They started yes. the company for a reason. And yes, it was to make money, often of course, but it was something bigger than that. Almost always. It's almost always like they had a dream. They had something they wanted to do. They, they you know, their kids were, they, they, they noted. I've, so many clients go, well, you know, I saw my kids, I'm making this up, but I saw my kids on the floor and there were a lot of chemicals on that floor and I thought, I'm getting rid of chemicals. You know, a lot of companies start that way, you know, and, and I, that's inspiring. But, but, you know, you don't ever want to lose that. And what happens is you start putting organization around it to get people that don't understand that initial um, that is initial inspiration and it starts to become transactional in the company. Yes. You know, and I make the point in my book, like you don't stop being a human when you walk into your office, Yes. you know? Yeah. So yeah. we, we, we often speak about how we are um, consumers some of the time and we're humans all of the time. Um, right. So when I got to that piece in your book about this idea that you don't become a human being just because you've entered a space it, it really yeah. rein, reinforced my belief because I, I do believe that if, if brands understood that they're solving for the ways in which we're human, not for the ways in which we consume, then we can have a, a much richer conversation. And then you can, this right. idea of sustainability can be a real thing because then we can help you define relationships beyond just this one moment. But, but David, you right. referred to something which, which is also very interesting for me, and I just want to see what, what's happening in your neck of the wood. If somebody said, what do you think are the missing ingredients in the world of brand building in your territory? Like, what are CMOs not getting right? What are CEOs not getting right? Like, what, what is missing? What, is the, what are the pieces that we can put together to to start to build brands that last and brands that truly make the world a better place? Well, I think the thing that's missing is understanding the value set that leads, that led to the company and then can live inside a company. And when you take those values out, people become rudderless. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you, when you add values in and when you add values into the branding or, or into the work or into the company and you express and articulate the brand in a powerful way, it actually increases retention in a company. This is this is not me. There are studies that have shown it'll it, it'll increase retention in a company. It'll uh, and think about just increasing retention by creating a meaningful culture through a brand. You end up just think about like if you have like a five or six percent turnover every year, your big company. Think about the amount of institutional knowledge that's walking up, going down the elevator, and walking out, and not coming back. You then have to stop and retrain people to actually then reteach them the institutional knowledge and whatever that brand is. And when you have a brand, people people feel like they're part of something bigger. And listen, sometimes it's a lie. I mean, the, the other thing is sometimes you, you it has to be real. It has to be authentic or else we all have bullshit detectors and we can smell it really fast. And so I think that's the other thing that's missing is making it real actionable. And, and uh, you, know, you can talk all day long, but if you don't live the brand, people are going to know. Yes. Yes. 